requires us to either go see a doctor or the pain is, let's say, more just the, the body reacting to, uh, to stress, to, uh, to a long run. And we should do something different to, uh, to get back to, to form. And it's not really an injury. I think and that was great that you kind of interject again because I forgot the question because I kind of went off on a tangent. So sorry. But like, I think the, I think I, I like to teach people that there's not really such a thing as good pain. Like we kind of made that term up because we want to be stubborn doing the stuff that we don't want to stop doing because of a pain complaint. Assuming that you have to feel pain to know that you're doing the right thing. That's not true either. There's good reason to maybe push into a little bit of pain to know that it's okay. But that doesn't mean that you have to do that every time to make pain go away either. So another thing, when you mentioned like, you know, when something pops up, so let's say you're out running and your knee gets sore, right? It's not likely that it's that run that actually made your knee sore. Maybe you landed weird and you twisted it, whatever. But when I talk to my athletes on, on a call, I say, well, tell me what you've been doing the last couple months. And every single time, there has been a sharp increase in some load, either a new load mm. or the original load beyond the athlete's current capacity to adapt to that load. Mm. So that injury did not happen that day, even though they felt it. But your knee injury didn't happen that day, even though you felt mm. it that day. It had been coming on for months of time, usually. And it always is attributed to something in their life, right? Maybe it's physical load, maybe it's work stress, maybe it's moving, maybe it's not sleeping, like it's not a simple thing to really pinpoint or nail down to one thing, but the physical loading is the easiest thing to manage. And so if athlete goes on a run and they're sore, like the next day they're sore again, you have to find a, a dosage of load that they can do where they break that behavior or that outcome where the next day they have pain. because that becomes an expectation for the athlete. And if that becomes the expectation, then that becomes the problem in itself in some cases. And so I would say for runners, like the kind of the like knee jerk reaction for runners is like, okay, cool. You, you love doing long distance, low intensity, you know, kind of moderate paced exercise, right? And that's all they do all the damn time, right? That's only one kind of load to your tendons. It's a very like low force, moderate velocity strain inducing kind of load to the connective tissues that's very different than strength training which is very high intensity very low volume very stress inducing to the ma actual material properties of the connective tissue so those athletes mm -hmm. dump a bunch of the volume they need to build up some tolerance in their connective mm -hmm. tissue and then they need to work back into running again Makes so much sense. Uh, I think the two things I uh, hear are one is, uh, you know, people try to um, ramp up their training, running, climbing, what have you too quickly. And then the body uh, kind of complains. And then the second thing might be that uh, uh, sometimes often we have injuries that might stay asymptomatic for a while. Mm -hmm. until you push them beyond an envelope and then the body just kind of throws its hands up. And I think that's maybe what happened with my shoulder. You know, for many years, I kept pushing it, uh, you know, with just some niggles, just some loss in range of motion. And then one fine day, you know, I couldn't raise my uh, arm above my ear. And I think that was, my, that was my body saying, okay, enough is enough. You know, you have sort of uh, pushed through these uh, other uh, signals I gave you. And now I don't want you to go and, uh, do this particular thing anymore i want you to go in and and treat yourself um one thing uh also uh kind of adding on is you know often uh tyler if you're told you know hey listen to your body you know if uh if doing something um hurts stop doing it and i think you you uh, pointed at this earlier but i see that you know because i i, I know you often advocate for continuing to practice the sport in certain cases. So let's say somebody, like you said, somebody has like a finger injury or finger pain, somebody has knee pain, maybe elbow pain. And again, you know, when I started climbing, I was told, hey, you ha you're you having like elbow pain, rest that elbow, you know, do, do the other modalities uh, with 
compression and ice and then don't stress that 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 elbow for some time give it complete rest but i think sometimes you advocate for uh continuing that activity so i think you you touched on this earlier but would love for you to expound upon a bit more on uh on sort of uh how you uh, advise in certain cases to continue the sport yeah i think i think in in rare circumstances is it con- what i would is considered risky to load like a sports injury Obviously, like the exceptions would be like shoulder dislocations, ACL tears, full Achilles ruptures. Like there's the obvious, you know, fractures. There's the obvious exceptions to the rule. But most people that are getting kind of a pops up one day and it kind of sticks around a long time. Those are not injuries that should be considered red or even yellow flags for mechanical loading and physical stress. The type of physical stress, I think, is important to differentiate for the person like you know, it needs to change a little bit in some way and the dosage needs to change. But very rarely is it like a hard, you shouldn't put load on that thing. At the beginning, if someone has like an acute flare up, let's say your shoulder, like it's okay to take a week off and not do anything. Like it is okay to, like if the individual feels like it's makes sense to not load, to let it chill out. And I think that's pretty intuitive, you know, and you kind of limp around for a little bit. But if I do that for too long, you know, like the actual quantity or the amount of tissue that's injured in that context is probably not a huge amount. If I continue down the rabbit hole of not loading it, I will lose capacity in all of the other healthy tissues. And so there's an Australian physio, Peg Purdom, who is well known for using the donut hole analogy, you know, I think maybe in the 90s saying like, focus on the donut and not the hole, you know? And so it's like, Mm more healthy stuff than injured stuff. And so you're probably okay to load. We need to maybe change the load to make sure you're loading a lot of healthy stuff. But in that context, it makes people's pain go away quicker than anything because the pain is not a reflection of the actual extent of the injury. The pain is a mix of all the things in someone's life. Maybe there's some physical pain but there's like a bunch of psychological stress. There's a bunch of fear. There's a bunch of sleep loss. Like everything gets kind of thrown upside down. And so someone's pain is because it's not reflective of the injury, it's almost always okay to keep loading them. Even in the context of like rotator cuff tears, when people, I've had multiple clients with 50% rotator cuff tears and they will go, I'll, I'll send them to get a surgical opinion and they always get sent back and they're like, keep doing rehab. And every single one of those athletes that I can think of off my head are back to loading full strength, doing their sports again. Mm -hmm. So it's like our body has this massive built-in buffer for being able to like get these injuries, but still adapt to them and still get back to our sport. Obviously there's limits to that, but like that's, that's the exception, not the rule for most athletes. 